Have you ever wanted to invest in real estate but didn't know where to start, how to fund the deals, how to find the deals, how to negotiate them? My name's Grant Cardone. I've been buying real estate for 30 years and have accumulated 7,700 units that have done over $2 billion worth of real estate transactions. I'm gonna be doing a webinar that I want you to attend. When you sign up for this webinar, I'm gonna give you my home study course, the fundamentals of multifamily, four ways to invest in multifamily, the mechanics of the deal, finding the deal, buying the deal, negotiating the deal, how to get the funding for the deal, how to manage the deal, and how to get 4X to 10X returns on your investment. I'll break it down and make it so simple for you, and I guarantee you'll get your first deal in 2020, and it's gonna be the steal of your lifetime. And when you sign up, I'll send you my home study course, and you can actually use this so that when we're in the webinar, we can go over it together, okay? Hey, I look forward to seeing you. Hey, Grant Cardone, welcome to the Cardone Zone. Welcome back to the Cardone Zone, where every week I come to you to talk about your business, your economy, your money. What else matters, folks? Come on. <laughs> what else are you caring about? What else do you care about? Every week, by the way, every Saturday from now on, uh, Saturdays till the end of time, Grant Cardone and the Cardone Zone will be on Sirius Radio. What channel is that? 132? 132. 132 Sirius XM Radio, where Grant Cardone gets you serious about your money, your finances. Hey, please, please do me a favor. Throw a comment. Serious XM Business Radio. I'm working on my radio voice, by the way. Okay? You got a radio face. <laughs> no, I got a TV face and a radio voice. Okay? So Johnny, the camera guy is in the background. He is now part of the show. Okay? We're going we're gonna to get famous, Johnny. Big, big, uh, big shout out to everybody out there that follows me and subscribes to me. Um, uh, really appreciate all of you. Maybe, maybe what I can do is I can open up my thing here. Johnny, and see the people that are coming in. Oh, you on Facebook and YouTube? It's crazy, man. Okay, you guys that love me, please comment below. Okay, I'm going to be covering some great topics today about how America comes back. And you guys that hate me, please comment below because I love bashing you, bashing your, your, your little avatar, your little fake avatars in. I love the little troll bitches. I went three minutes, um, and uh, but mostly what I do is I love helping you guys get your money right. I have converted so many people that thought, oh my God, I don't know if I like this guy. Yesterday, I got, a, I got an email. I don't know if we have that email walking around here. Guy got fired from his job two weeks ago, got on Cardone University, watched one of the 13 videos on how to get your job back or how to get a better job, how to get your dream job in 72 hours or less. I'd love to give him a shout out. And uh, guess what happened? Got a better job, paying him twice, double what he was being paid. Uh, that's pretty fantastic. That's what I live for. So again, I want to help you get your business back, get your job back, get your money back, get back to an abnormal, crazy, unbelievable future for you and your families. I know that's important to me. Johnny, let's roll the show. Let's do it. Hey, welcome Grant Cardone in the Cardone Zone, and every week I come to you to talk about your business, your money, and your finances. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you how to get out of this, what is this thing? Funk. This funk, okay? I'm going to blow up in this deal, I guarantee you, okay? I'm looking, I'm looking in the windshield, baby. That thing is six feet wide. My rear view mirror, I tore it off my car today. Just ripped it right off the car. Don't even need it anymore. I'm going forward. What about you? Let me know. Uh, Trump came out yesterday and said he will not. He went to the Ford Motor Company without a mask on. People are like, where's your mask, Grant? Dude, I do what the, the president does, okay? Were you going to arrest me? I was in an event right here public. Hey, you need to wear a mask. Okay, uh-huh. I got it. Okay, now, so I want to talk about the mask, okay? And I want to talk about how President Trump uh, did not wear a mask at the Ford Motor Company. And I also want to talk about whether or not he'll shut America down again if we have the second wave. I'm going to be talking about Joe Rogan today and how he got his $100 million and why you won't. <laughs> All you podcasters out there. Uh, President Trump lashed out at Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel, who might be running as Joe Biden's VP. If she does, that will be the final blow to Joe Biden. I'm not a political person. I'm just telling you, okay? America, 
Okay, America is fed up. Democrats and Republicans are fed up with being told they can't go to work, folks. I know I am. In a pair of late night tweets Thursday, she called the president of the United States a petulant child. I said, is she talking about me? That's me she's talking about. I am a petulant child. I admit it. I am immature. I admit it. But I am, while I am those things, I am also the person in my house that takes care of our family, 500 employees, bills of business from scratch. Yes, I'm immature, and I believe it takes some level of immaturity to actually be successful. Okay, You have to have some, some idea about fantasy and possibility, which is a little bit of that immature quality. Okay, His refusal, by the way, to wear a face mask at uh, the Ford manufacturing plant, and for that fact, anywhere in public, nobody's ever taken a picture of this guy with a mask on. Uh, she says that makes him a petulant child. Okay, all right. Maybe it makes him the leader of the free world, too. I don't, he's still the president, mask or no mask, okay? And I don't know if that's a joke to you guys or not, but it's not a joke to me. I'm like, all right, there's no proof, and I'll be talking about it in another segment, there's no proof that the mask has actually stopped this. Nestle wrote a strongly worded letter to Trump ahead of his visit telling him he had a legal and moral responsibility. This is the governor of Michigan. You have a legal and moral responsibility to wear a mask. She's just trying to get attention. And you should too. Unleashed on the president in an interview with CNN's Wolf Blitzer, she slammed Trump for sending a terrible message and said that his unwillingness to adhere to the Democrat, to the rules of the state. He's the president of the United States of America. Okay. Uh, his, uh, her executive order, supposedly, and Ford, comp Ford Motor Company's policy mandating face coverings. I go into the Publix here. You have to have a face covering. All right, okay. I go into a restaurant. You have to have one. Good, so I wear it in. And what does everybody do then? The next thing you know, it's around their neck. Okay, and then the next thing you know, it's on the table. And the next thing you know, four or five days into this event, I promise you, by next week, nobody will be wearing their mask. You guys are going to have masks all over the house, toilet paper all over the house, your little, your little hand wipes all over the house, okay? You know, in Mar by March of next year, we will not even remember this moment of the mask. Uh, she says he's a ridiculous person, and she is ashamed to have him as the president of the United States. Again, folks, this is not political. I'd love to know your opinion. Should the president of the United States, Democrat or Republican, have to abide by the same rules that are being encouraged, not laws, that are being encouraged by other people because of some arbitrary? The mask is an arbitrary. There is no proof, no validation. Okay? There's, been, there's not been enough scientific tests to know whether or not the mask would actually stop anything. She says he doesn't care enough about the safety of others. He doesn't care about their welfare. He doesn't respect others enough to... To, uh, to wear the mask, okay? The painless task, she says, of wearing the task. I hope, she says, that we'll have a new president soon and enough uh, uh, that the that, that, that new president would respect people more than the president does, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you what I want out of a president. Dude, I want an economy that works. I want an economy that works. I want jobs, okay? I want antibodies that are produced in America, not in China. I want cars that are produced in America, not in Japan. Maybe this is our moment, folks. Okay? I want bridges and roads and highways that don't have potholes in them. We clearly are going to have higher taxes at some point in the future. We just took on $7 trillion worth of debt. Okay? I want my business to work. Okay? Look, there's no proof that a mask can save my family. This false sense of protection, by the way. What is the downside of the, fa of the, the mask? Oh, I put this on and now I'm safe. No, you're not. You're not safe because of a mask, okay? It's an arbitrary, any more than six feet. Is it six feet and two inches? Six feet, five feet, eight inches? What is the exact number? There's no scientific proof. This thing could spread eight feet. Who knows how long it lasts, okay? They said I'd have to be out of work for two weeks. If we stayed home for two weeks, it would solve it. They were wrong. We've been gone two months, okay? They said we'll flatten the curve. Some places have flattened, some places have not. People are getting sick in New York City that have never been outside their homes. They said the ventilator would save people's lives. We bought hundreds of millions of dollars worth of ventilators on the back of your taxes. They kill and they kill people, okay? On and on, 
arbitraries out my ass, okay? Face masks are recommended for all, but do they really work? What do you think? They aren't built for your face, okay? They could do as much damage, by the way, as rebreathing your own carbon, carbon dioxide. You are, you're killing the trees. I don't know where the green people are right now. The green people are be going crazy like, hey, hey, you can't put a mask on, you're killing trees. Trees need your carbon dioxide. The bad breath that you have could save a tree. People are touching their faces more, by the way. When you put this on, guess what? Your hands are the problem. It's spreading the germs, not to mention we're suppressing our immune systems. The human being, my body is built to get sick, make its adjustment, and get strong. Okay, I'm 62 years old. I'm right in that number of people that are most at risk. Bring it on. My job is to take care of my immune system. My job is to take care of my health. My job is to, if I'm at risk, to stay home. Okay? What do you think? 305-865-8668. 305-865. You got callers? We get them. Okay. Uh, call us up. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, would you wear a mask? Will you, will, will you wear a mask? Are you the kind of person that's wearing a mask? Do you think the mask makes you safer and better off? And what if, yeah, what if, what if the masks don't work? Is this going to do it? Okay. What's going to save your family is not this mask. It's going to be your finances. It's going to be securing your job, securing your business, growing your business, growing your future, getting your money out of the banks and investing it. This is a financial dilemma for people. How it started, how it happened, why it spread, what happened. What are you going to do now, America? What are you going to do right now? Okay, I know what I'm doing. Today I get a, an, an invitation from the SBA right here. $150,000 loan for, for, for an SBA. This is the Small Business Administration. Wants to lend me $150,000. Sherry comes to me and says, hey, do you want this loan for $150,000? I'm like, yeah, if I don't have to pay it back, I do. Otherwise, I don't want the money. Why do I want the money? Three and, se- three, and three quarters percent. Uh, I would pay every month uh, $731 a month uh, to borrow $150,000, okay? Accept or cancel. This is a business, okay? This is a business. You guys don't need more debt. You need more sales. This is an easy way out. The easier way out. The easier way out is never the easier way out. It's the trap, okay? So watch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and say, hey, I, I don't need this 150 grand unless there's a way not to pay it back, number one. Well, man, this is an easy way. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pick up a phone and call a client and say, do business with me. Buy from me. Buy my products. Buy my services. I don't need to pay them back. I just need to deliver a service to them. Uh, we're doing a... Uh, Uh, I'm doing an emergency meeting of executives here in my office uh, next month in 30 days. 25 people. I have a classroom back there for 140 people. I'm going to do 25 people at $10,000. That's $250,000. That's $100,000 more than the loan. It's income to me. It's exchange with a client. They do better. I do better. And I don't have to pay the loan back. So for all of you out there that are looking to borrow money, For all of you out there that took that PPP money, you took the federal stimulus money, if you don't know how to pay it back, you should not be taking that money. The only way out is to work. Phone calls, emails, calling people, talking to people, getting in front of customers, selling your products and services. Revenue is your way back. The rescue line, the rescue line. If you want to rescue your family, you want to rescue your business, you want to rescue your job, if you want to rescue your future, Revenue is the answer. It's not the mask. It's not a ventilator. It's revenue. It's revenue, okay? Johnny, how the phone's doing? Oh, let me talk to somebody. And when you call in, let me know, man, uh, uh, where are you at with uh, the mask? And where are you at with revenue right now? If you got a question I can help you with, that's what this show is for. Zach, how you doing in the New Mex? I'm doing good, Grant. How you doing? Uh, I'm uh, I'm working on that mask thing. Oh, yeah. What about the mask? Yeah. So um, over here, our, our governor basically just told us, uh, you know, it's kind of an ultimatum for us to wear it. 
I went over there to Walmart to pick up some groceries the other day. I didn't wear one, and everyone was looking at me like I was crazy. Yeah. But uh, well, dude, as look, far you're, as you're, my, you're in Walmart, you're in Walmart, you're in, a, you're in an aisle that's six feet wide, what, or, or it's four feet wide, wide, okay? And you're passing in the aisle. What, what is Walmart supposed to go change every aisle that they have in the world? Every shopping center is supposed to like, oh, we need to make our, our, our aisles bigger. Okay, the airlines, they have three seats and three seats. Okay, the whole cabin is seven feet wide. Right. The, the cabin right. of a, a 727 might be 10 feet. And I'm putting six people yeah. in a row. If you take the middle seat out, you can't just take the middle seat out on a plane and think the plane's going to work. Okay, you'd have to act, take every seat out of the plane and then come back in and put two seats in. And it would be year, uh, uh, probably nine months for them to get that approved by the, the whoever flies the planes. The FD, well, who wow. is that? The FAA. The FAA, okay? Because they have to go back in and approve it, blah, blah, blah. And then the planes can't fly because you need 270 people on that plane for the plane to even make sense. Okay, what's your question or, or comment? Yeah, so um, I just wanted to go ahead and just acknowledge uh, my appreciation for you and what you've done in my life. Um, I have a father I grew up with. Uh, he was an authoritarian. Um, he's a middle-class American owning a home. Definitely a change uh, my perspective on uh, when it comes to renting or owning. Trying, trying, still trying to get the girl to uh, to move on to uh, away from uh, buying a home, but um, I'm currently working for Safe Light Auto Glass. Just pre previously, just uh, got picked up by them. Um, they put me on furlough previously whenever this lockdown happened, and then I got picked up by a previous employer uh, through ADT Security Services. So I was selling uh, camera systems and security systems uh, during that time until uh, see if I pick me back up again. But I'm, I'm working hard, uh, you know, investing in myself, investing in a mentor, spending like $500 an hour just to talk to him on the phone. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to 10x. Yeah, good, good for you, Zach. And, and uh, if I can help you uh, over at ADT sell more camera systems, uh, I want to give you Cardone U, CardoneU.com for free. You, are you on that yet? Yeah, I, I, I took the 30-day free trial. Um, I, I watched a, a yeah, lot. Yeah, good. Of, Go yeah. grab that. Go grab that and dig in on that thing, dude. Also, we, we do a mentor call every week. It's, it's good to hear that you're working with somebody to help, help you be better at your game. That's what everybody has to do in America, folks. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot look backwards right now. You have to look forward, okay? You have to look forward. The mask is not going to protect your finances. And I know it's not meant to protect your finances. Somebody's going to say, oh, it's meant to protect other people. Okay. But people need to go out into the stores. You guys got to go support your local community. Okay. Like we're, we're doing something. We have a, a, a policy here at my family and here at the office. We want to support local stores and shops and restaurants. We flattened the curve by not going out. Now we need to go out and spike the economic curve. You need to buy some, some cameras from uh, uh, our, our friend Zach in New Mexico. If I lived in New Mexico, Zach, I'd, I'd do a deal with you, get some cameras in my place. We got cameras everywhere. Here. I mean, I can't get away from the camera. Next caller. Hey, should Trump, Peter, should Trump wear a mask when he goes out in public or should he be exempt of, of, of that because he is a, uh, the president? I think it's his personal choice. Um, you know, I won't be complying anymore. Um, I think people, you know, they have it backwards. They should be concerned that uh, these businesses are closed and people that have worked their whole lives, now their businesses are being destroyed. I mean, that's what we really should be focusing on, not a mask. I don't know if it works or not, but the point is, you know, people are taking their, their government money, their $1,200 checks, and they're going out and buying big screen flat TVs. It's like, are you people, you know, they don't understand, you know? You should be banking that money, getting your powder dry, and then going to buy some real asset, right? Trade that paper money, like you say, and, and put it into something real, you know? So that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, where do you live? I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. So are, the comp are businesses open in Boston? Uh, we're lagging. We're lagging behind. We're just starting now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, things are going to be opening on Monday, I think, more, but... Um, you know, I'm looking at real estate. I have 75 grand invested with you, um, and I know it's safe, and, and I'm happy I did that. And um, I've also just closed on a on a piece of real estate as well. So I'm going to be doing my own thing and and continuing to follow your advice. So yeah, that's yeah, all I know. yeah, good for you, my friend. Well, I appreciate you calling in, and and uh, I, I can't wait till Boston opens back up. I, I wonder if Trump right, will. Right. I, I wonder if there's a second wave of this thing like they're predicting, and I expect there could be. 
I mean, this thing came at what, February? It came to us in February, March? Yes, sir. I can't imagine October, November, there's not another flu breakout. And it doesn't matter if it's a flu, everybody's going to freak out. Wuhan's back. Wuhan's back. Okay, now the question is, will Trump close the country the second time? He said he will not close the country. He will not, yesterday said, he will not shut the uh, America down on a second wave. 38 million people out of work. I hope he doesn't shut it down again. I'm never, ever, ever being convinced into a shutdown again. Well, I didn't get talked into the first one, did I, Johnny? No. So would you, would you shut down again if they told you you couldn't go back to work? Or has two months been enough? One time been enough for you? Let me know, 305-865-8668. Uh, as states begin to reopen their economies in the coronavirus pandemic, so many big words. Some experts are arguing that you won't, they won't do much to alleviate the effects of the economic shock from the virus. In a working paper for the National Bureau of Economic Research, Christopher Meisner, uh, an economist, that makes everything questionable right there, from the Department of Economics, even more questionable, found that lifting stay-at-home orders may not make much of a difference in terms of economic effects. I want you, you guys to understand what he's saying. He's saying, if you stay at home or if you lift it and let people go out into the world, it will not have a difference on the economic effects of this country. Okay, so let me, let me, let me, let me understand this, okay? So if people stay home, they will spend less money or more money or the same amount of money than if they go out into the into society. Well, people got to buy the gas, clothes. They do. Look, look, when you go to work, you drive to work, you burn gas. Okay? I just got gas. Why do you guys think gas went down to zero? Cuz there was no usage. So what happened was the barrel, not the barrels, but the the oil supply in America was like, "Hey, we have too much oil. Nobody's using burning gas." Okay? Ford Motor Company, Chrysler, they burn fuel. They burn fuel to produce products. Okay? When you don't use the products, it overfills, and then the value of it goes down. People were staying in our apartments. I have people spending 24 hours a day in my apartments. They're abusing my apartment, but they're not using the roads. They're not using the stores. They're not using the gas stations. They're not using the 7-Elevens. They're not buying Twinkies. They're not buying ice cream. All that stuff you do that you shouldn't do because you left your house. Okay? If the disease is still out there and people perceive it to be dangerous to go out, they will not go out. No, no they're going to go out, man. Listen, okay? you guys, you economists, you're living in some freaking altered reality. I am willing to go out where it's dangerous. Like, are you kidding? People do stuff that's dangerous every day. People actually pay money to jump off of mountain cliffs. Let's jump out of a plane. I need something to do, okay? Let me go cheat on my wife. Let's see what happens, okay? Like, it's crazy what people do. So people take risk, okay? People do not want to be stuck in their homes, and they will spend more money when they leave their house. The rest of the world is in a recession as well as we are. The entire planet is in this contraction, Reopening America and these other countries, they say, will have a smaller effect on the comeback. What do you think? Now, I know what we're doing in my office. Go to the restaurant. Go to the grocery store. I'm giving all my people uh, uh, some money to, to eat at a local restaurant here in town. Friday, Saturday night, go there. Bring a spouse. You cannot take out. You can't go there and pick it up and leave. You got to go there. You got to sit down. I'm going to give everybody 50 bucks or whatever, and then hopefully you guys buy some tequila while you're there, you buy an extra dessert, you bring your boyfriend, he, buy, he gets him a big T-bone or something, uh, maybe you buy a bottle of wine, next thing you know, people are spending money. People do stuff when they go out. Like, who doesn't go to the grocery store with a, with a this is my list, and see something that you're like, oh, I got to have one of them pizzas. Yeah, dude. We, we need to go to the mall right now. I need to go to the mall. Everybody should go to the mall this weekend. We, we have a policy here. Hey, buy local right now. Buy local. You remember the old Buy America? Buy local right now. Go out. Don't buy from Amazon right now. Buy local. Every U.S. state is amid some form of reopening their economy. States like Georgia and Texas started early. Florida's coming on. I think Alaska is completely 100% open. The shelter-in-place orders have expired in most places, and respective governors are reopening except for places like Michigan. I know Colorado's open as a means of stepping up, stepping up the economic return. 
There was a paper done, NBR, uh, NBER paper. It had three main findings. I don't trust most of these findings, these papers. The first one is the stay-at-home orders were likely, uh, were likely effective in slowing the spread of the virus. It doesn't say it was for sure. Likely. Likely. Okay, well, of course, okay, so nobody went outside. But not in decreasing the rate of cumulative mortality. I think we've lost 80,000 people in this country, 90,000. What's the number? Anybody know? That's a lot of people dead, man. I mean, that is a lot of people. 600,000 people died last year of heart disease and cancer. 50,000 a month. Last year, died of heart disease and cancer. Okay? So also it said this, this reading, what, what does it say? 1.6. 1.6 what? Million. million worldwide, though. That's worldwide. I think it's 100,000 no, no. in the U.S. No, no. It's not 1.6 million people dead in the U.S. No, no. Not, not from the virus. Not from Wuhan. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm getting bad. See, see, get false information all over. 1.6 million people. I saw it on Google. It must be. It must be true, okay? Uh, they also suggest in this paper that the orders may have impacted other jurisdictions and that there's little evidence that the orders themselves are associated with larger declines in local economic activity. You understand what they're saying here? Hey, man, stay at home didn't affect the economy. So 95,000 people dead, yeah. 300,000 recovered. Yeah, okay. And the 95,000 that are dead, just so everybody understands, if you had a heart attack, and you had some kind of temperature issue, not necessarily a coronavirus, that you were not tested for coronavirus, but you died during March or April, and you had some fever, which you probably would. Oh, that's a corona death right there. Okay? Uh, somebody, some old elderly person, uh, they, they, they had flu symptoms. Okay, uh, maybe they were going to die anyway. So, so did corona kill them, or did the heart kill them? I'm just saying, folks, like you cannot lump all this together and get shell shocked. The negative economic shocks from this event will kill more people because of suicides, depression, heart disease comes from stress. Marriage will be marriages will be broke up because of spending too much time together. You need relief from your spouse. And, and he's shaking her head. And and because of the financial burden, man, like I feel the stress. I feel the stress of this event, and I know the average American must feel tremendous amounts of stress here. The coronavirus pandemic, I hate saying that together, first began making waves through the US. US. All but eight states in the country were shut down completely and implemented the stay-at-home orders. Donald Trump, if it comes back again, sir, will you, will you enforce the stay-at-home More importantly, you as a listener, if they do the stay at home again, are you going to lay down a second time? Unprecedented number of layoffs, 38 million people unemployed. Politicians, including Trump, pushed for states to begin their reopening. I think Georgia, Texas started, right? Like aggressively saying, hey, I want to reopen. They got pushed back. From the local businesses. I'm here in Sunny Isles in Miami. Miami was really slow to reopen. They're scared to reopen. I think Disneyland's open in Monday. So how do you restart? How do you reboot? I want to restart. I want to reboot. And I promise you, if the second wave comes, please don't ask me to stay at home because I won't do it again. Okay? Let's talk to our callers. Derek, from South Carolina. Derek what's going on in South Carolina, buddy? Uncle G, what's going on, baby? Come on, brother. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. I I, I just want to start, sir, by saying that, you know, I've been following you for the past, like, five years or so, and I just really appreciate you creating certainty in my life and, and so many others' lives uh, through just the resources that you give us every day, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate you being on the show. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, my question is, you know, I work a nine-to-five job. Um, I'm a freight broker, and uh, essentially I'm starting a company. I'm bringing the number one uh, source of health and fitness to the market. My big problem right now is I don't have any attention. You know, I don't have any network. So if 
my question really is, should I be focusing on like uh, lower entry items so that I can actually just get attention and grow um, kind of an audience to my brand? Or should I stick to my guns and kind of uh, stick with the higher ticket price item. Yeah, no. So, That's like sticking to sticking to your guns is suicide right now because you you know the first thing that happens in a contraction is everybody gets fearful. So you need an inventory of offers. So you number one, you have to get attention not for your product or your offer, but for you and what you do, regardless of whether it's free, ten thousand dollars or ten million dollars. So, but you do need to offer. You do need to have entry level offers for people so they can. You know, so they can become interested in what you're doing. When I go to the grocery store, I go to Whole Foods, they don't charge me to walk into the store. They made a big investment in the store for me to go in there. They have inventory there that they believe I'll buy there and that they need to get me to the store so I can go in there and be tempted to purchase uh, uh, things. Walmart's a great example. Okay, I think I'm going there to get cheap stuff. The next thing you know, I walk out with a $600 machine that mixes up fruit that I don't even use. So called the Vitamix machine or the, 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 the super blender. Okay, everybody's bought the super blender they didn't need. Or the, uh, the, 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 huh? The cold press juicer. Yeah, the cold press juicer. You're not even healthy. <laughs> okay, and then you got to go buy a bunch of vegetables. Watch how it goes in. I'm going in to get uh, pizzas for the kid at Walmart's. I see the freaking bullet machine. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a blender. I'm going to get healthy now. I went in for a pizza. I wasn't even thinking about health. Now I see the blender machine. The guy's doing his little trick show over there. I'm like, damn, I need that. $215. I'm going to get one. Now what do I have to do? I got to go to the, to the produce department and get a bunch of goodies to put in the machine. And I come home inspired telling my wife, we're going to get healthy this week. And that's good for the economy, by the way. That is what happens when you go into stores that does not happen online. Now, I'm doing a moratorium on Amazon for the next three months. Everything's going to be bought local. I'm not going to Jeff. I like Jeff. Awesome dude. I'm not going to buy anything from him for the next 90 days. If I can buy it local, I'm going to buy it local. If I can eat local, I'm going to eat local, okay? I'm not going to do any of the Uber stuff. If I can go to a restaurant, sit down. I'll go in there with my little mask on. I'm going to take it off to eat because I can't figure out how to get the food through the mask. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to get on with my way of doing business. And I'm going to tip people. You guys need to tip people. You need to pay people. You need to walk out. You need to go out into your environment. You need to start doing business. And that is how you're going to get seen, man. You need to be out now, folks. You got to get out. You can't do everything behind the video camera. You got to get out. You got to get about, okay? U.S. cities that have applied more of the measures, they said, this is what's in the news today. People that went and stayed at home, they say did not suffer any greater economic misfortune than cities that had looser policies. That's, that's impossible. That is absolutely impossible, okay? New York City, you're telling me New York City is not being punished for having no one in their streets? No one in their stores. No one out and about. Folks, again, this is not politics. This is finance. Forget the politics. This is finance and basic economics. People that stay home will spend less money than people that go into the marketplace. So, huh? Yeah, right now? Yes. Boom, give me five. Give me four. Give me three. Give me two. Give me 10 seconds. Have you ever wanted to invest in real estate but didn't know where to start? how to fund the deals, how to find the deals, how to negotiate them. My name's Grant Cardone. I've been buying real estate for 30 years and have accumulated 7,700 units. have done over $2 billion worth of real estate transactions. I'm gonna be doing a webinar that I want you to attend. When you sign up for this webinar, I'm gonna give you my home study course, the fundamentals of multifamily, four ways to invest in multifamily, the mechanics of the deal, finding the deal, buying the deal, negotiating the deal, how to get the funding for the deal, how to manage the deal, and how to get 4X to 10X returns on your investment. I'll break it down and make it so simple for you and I guarantee you'll get your first deal in 2020 and it's gonna be the steal of your lifetime. And when you sign up, I'll send you my home study course and you can actually use this so that when we're in the webinar, we can go over it together, okay? Hey, I look forward to seeing you. Have you ever wanted This will be after that, Johnny. I think that's not right. Hey, welcome back to Cardone Zone at Sirius 
XM Business Radio. Every Saturday I come to you talking about your business, your finances, your economy, and how you can reboot, get your, your part of the American dream. This show is not political, by the way. I just want to make everybody clear. No politics on this show, just economics and finance. What else matters to you? Come on, I don't care if you're blue or you're red. I'm going for green. The American dream requires some green, okay? And it requires some action. It doesn't necessarily require a mask. It probably does require a job and a strategy. And if you want to get super rich, it might require some investing. Because I've never seen anybody get rich because of hard work and talent. If you want to learn how to invest in real estate, check out grantcardone.com forward slash REI, free webcast, free webinar, free training for how I turned $3,500 into $2 billion worth of real estate. You heard that right. How I turned $3,500 investment into almost $2 billion of real estate. And how I did it investing in real estate, real assets that provide cash flow, appreciation, leverage, depreciation. The biggest tax advantages in the world sit in real estate. It's why more millionaires have been made in real estate than any other industry over the last many thousands of years. Imagine buying real estate in Rome 500 years ago. My God, the queen has it. Okay, and she lives off the rent that she collects from the people called taxes. By the way, taxes are, property taxes, are a form of real estate. Imagine if there was no property taxes, you would not have a local government. And that brings us to whether you're going to stay at home or whether you're going to go to work, okay? In the earlier segment, I was talking about the stay-at-home thing. Trump will not, he said yesterday, will not enforce a second stay at home. Fauci said there will be Dr. Fauci, Dr. Doomsday, Fauci, said there will be a second wave. Okay, doesn't bother me, bro. We've been having flus in this country for years. Every year, every year, 50, 60,000 people die from a flu. 50, 60,000 people die every year from car wrecks. 30, 40,000 people die from overdoses of drugs every year. Uh, Notice we're not talking about guns anymore, are we? Okay. 600,000 people every year die from heart disease and cancer. They're diseases. We haven't found a cure to them. Okay. Are they contagious? I believe they are. I believe cancer is contagious. And I also believe that heart disease is contagious. Okay. Stress, man. You're getting stressed. You're stressed out. You're going to get diseases. People are being stressed out right now with, with, oh, man, if you stay at home, it doesn't matter. Okay, well, where where did my fucking job go? (laughs) Bleep, bleep. Where did my job go? Why did I lose my job? I'm going to tell you something. If if we have a second wave and my staff here says they don't want to come back to work, they're going to be let go. I am not going to run an office remote. It's cost me money. It's cost me sales. It's cost me enthusiasm. It cost me, me a, a, a team and a culture. If you stay at home in this second wave, you will not only lose your job again, not just here, but everywhere, okay? You're not going to get the job back you deserve, okay? Out of sight. Remember this, out of sight, out of mind. If no one can handle customers, if you're not handling customers, talking to customers, more customers, going forward into the end of the year, you will lose your job, folks. It's not because I'm going to fire you. It's because the job won't be there anymore. If you aren't there, you can't be paid. If you aren't on the field, you can't hit the ball. If you're not in the ring, you can't get knocked out and you can't get a knockout. Anyone who thinks staying home encourages jobs. If you're making sense, I can get more done at home. No human being on this planet can get more done at home. It's not possible. I mean... You can only get so much done in one home, okay? You can be a maid at home. You can be a cook at home. What else can you do at home? You can have sex at home. How much sex can you have at home? How many babies can you make at home? And by the way, after a while, you might need to leave the bedroom and go get you a job. A real job. Okay? I guarantee you it's going to make a difference when people go back to work, okay? You get in your car, you drive to work, you burn gas. You eat lunch out. You should eat lunch out. You should tip people right now. Tip them hard right now. Okay, lunch is 20 bucks. 
$4 isn't your problem. Hit them with four or five or $10. $10 is not your problem. 10 million is your problem. The future is your problem. The money you have will not get you out of this situation. The money you can get, the future in front of you can get you out of this situation. Go to dinner this weekend. Grab your wife. Y'all been home? Grab your wife. Find some restaurant you can go eat at. Whatever you can afford, go eat there and tip the people. Go to the mall. I think Aventura Mall is open this weekend. Go there, okay? Go there and buy something. You don't need to want it. Buy something, man, okay? Uh, What goes around comes around. Y'all trying to keep everything in the house. Guess what? Nothing goes around, nothing comes around. I'll tell you how insane this whole deal is. I live in a building. 38 residents live there. There's only like six people there. I can't go to the pool. They closed the beach in front of the place. I can't go to my pool because somebody's going to get infected because of some bullshit law by the state, uh, the Sunny Isles, I guess. All pools are closed, okay? We have a gym there. Can't use the gym for two months. Six people live in my building right now. It's it's completely insane. But what happened was the, the, the law of the land suppressed the people in the building. Okay, you're being suppressed right now. Your economy is being suppressed. Your ideas are being suppressed. Your ability to move freely is being suppressed. And they're telling you that the only ultimate solution is a vaccine that might not come for years to come. What about this? My system can create a vaccine to this problem. If if I could actually get exposed to the problem, I could make my adjustment. I remember I was robbed when I was 23 years old. Okay, I made the adjustments. I had 76 stitches put in my head and face. Guy came in my house, beat me, stole everything in my house, beat me, left me on the, the, in my, my bedroom on the ground for a dead man. Okay? I made adjustments after that, a lot of adjustments. My immune system said, you know what? Maybe I should quit hanging out with this group of people. Maybe I should quit having visitors at 3 o'clock in the morning on a Friday night. Maybe I should quit doing drugs. Okay, maybe I should quit hanging out with drug addicts. You have to make the adjustments, okay? Otherwise, you get beat up in life. And 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 I just I know that we're committed here to going out publicly and buying stuff, okay? To lift the economic curve. We flattened the virus curve. Now let's America go buy local. I encourage you to go buy local and lift the economic curve. Reopening states certainly doesn't hurt their individual economies. How could, it, how could it not help? It will help. Let's talk to our callers, Johnny. Reopening will boost state economies by listing, lifting supply-side shocks and unleashing a pent-up demand. Hey, Vince, how you doing, buddy? Good, doing great. How are you? I'm great, bro. Thanks for being on Hope. Thanks for th- hanging out with us on the show. Yeah, no problem, Grant. I appreciate it. I just got one quick question for you, man. Are we making Mandalay Bay happen in February next year? 100% Mandalay Bay. Let me just tell you some good news. Is it Vince? I love yes, this guy. it's Vince. Vince, right? You got it, bro. I'm glad you asked, Vince. Okay. Uh, not only is Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, February 2021 happening with 12,800 people, you will be sitting next to someone. If you are worried about sitting next to someone, don't go. 12,800 people out of 7 billion people will show up for that event. Will somebody I get sick? Maybe. Huh? I got my 10X mask. I'm ready. Let's go, bro. You don't, you don't even need to bring your mask. We won't even be doing masks. I guarantee you. We do masks. It's because we party in. <laughs> uh, you got it. It's because like we, we party in like a Ricky Rose Day. Yeah, let's go. Ricky, Ricky going to be there too. So not only are we doing that event, but I got a phone call today from one of the largest event companies in the world. I I, I can't give you the name of the group, but if I mention them, you know who they are. We're going to go do cities and we're going to do parking lots. Okay. So like we will do Miami and we'll do Miami Marlins stadium parking lot. You'll, it'll be a drive in and we're going to do them around the country. It's me, Mick Jagger. Mick's going to be there. He's going to do a little you don't always get what you want. You get what you, need. you get what you need. Maybe you guys are getting what you need right now. Okay. Hey, man, well, how, Vince, how do you feel about reopening? I'm ready. We're killing it here in Chicago anyways. Uh, you know, in my line of work, I do credit card processing. So 
we're all over the country. And while everyone else is contracting, we're expanding, we're 10 x in it, we're destroying it. Because all business owners right now are looking to save anywhere they can. Well, there was a federal law that was passed called the Dodd-Frank law that makes it where businesses no longer need to pay the credit card fee. So everyone's just all over it. And that's what we do. Yeah. So, so are you at home or are you at work? Um, I'm at work. I'm in my office building right now as we speak. How many people are in, that, uh, in, that, in your office with you? Right now we have about 20 people sitting inside here. Yeah, is that is everybody? Look around. Has everybody got a mask on right now? Uh, no, because we're all six feet apart. Yeah, exactly. Like we 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 did our meeting this morning. One person had a mask on this morning. I told Elaine. I said today's th- Friday. I told her on Monday. I said I guarantee you by the end of the week they'll like everybody be like I ain't wearing that thing. You guys got to do whatever yeah. you got to do. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody should do whatever they got to do. The things that that believe is going to protect them. But what's going to protect America is getting back to work. Agreed, 100%. Yeah. So, Grant, I just wanted to let you know, thanks for taking my call. Have Ben give me a call. Uh, we're going to put together the deal today for those 10X tickets, two of them. Okay, good. 10X, what, what level you want to be at? You want to be front row, front three rows? Front, oh, front? yeah, we're, we're Diamond, baby. He, uh, I was there last year. It was unbelievable. The event was out of this world. Uh, we'll only sit Diamond going forward. So he promised me... Uh, Front row uh, seats one and two, row A or whatever, right where you guys come down the aisle. So uh, you I want that aisle? You want that aisle? You never know what aisle I'm gonna come down though, bro. Now, who was your I favorite know, speaker? Who was your favorite speaker last year? There were so many. There were so many. I mean, Brandon Dawson, he killed it. Um, you know, I like The Rock. Rock was really good. Um, Scooter Braun, he was awesome. He so, liked I the mean, rock, The huh? list goes on and on. I can't say there was a bad speaker there. Yeah. What about your boy though? Uncle G? Oh, you always kill it, Uncle Yeah, G. yeah, yeah. Okay, man. Hey, I appreciate it. I'll get somebody to call you back on that. Make sure right, you get his number, Johnny, Thanks, so man. we can get him two, two VIP tickets. Um, okay, there's somebody. See, that, there, there you are right there, folks. Call me up. Post in, uh, post in the, the comments here. Are you ready to go back to work? Are you ready to get back to events? Are you ready to go back and light up the American economy? Because I'm going to tell you something different between our economy and other economies. For instance, Dubai. They're saying Dubai. 70% of the businesses in Dubai will close. That will not happen in America. We might lose 25% of the businesses in America. 32 million businesses. Maybe we lose 8 million. That'll be like terrible. But there'll be 24 million businesses still working. 70% of the businesses in Dubai may never reopen again. Why? What's the difference? Because in America, we have 330 million people that live here. We're not traveling through America. Plus, we have a million immigrants. Once this virus stops, we'll get back to immigrating. Immigrating, is that a word? Allowing a million people to come into our country every year. Immigration is actually good for America. We want people to come here, okay? But you don't want people coming in when you got unemployment going up. Because it takes jobs for people to have jobs. So let's get back to work. How do, you, how do you get back to work? How do you restart a, an economy? The government cannot do it by itself. You guys have to go out into the economy and spend money this weekend. Go to the mall. Go to the rec, uh, restaurant. A vaccine cannot save the economy. Reopening will boost states' economies. You going out will boost the state economy, the local economy, by lifting supply-side shocks and unleashing this pent-up demand, which Trump talks about the pent-up demand. He's right. People have a want to go out. This guy, Vince, has just called in. He wants to get to Vegas. Uh, this week, or, or three weeks from now, we're doing an event right here in my offices. We provided 25 seats for people to come in, executives to come in. We sold six in the first 30 minutes. Why? People want to come out. They want to restart their business, okay? People are comfortable at home. June 18th, 19th. June 18th, 19th, right here in my offices, okay? People are comfortable at home, but they're getting uncomfortable at home as well, okay? This all means the economic recovery will be a result of whether or not you and I get up, go out, and spend money. So let's do that this weekend. No more Amazon. Let's go to restaurants, okay? Let's go to work. Let's go out. Let's go spend some money. Go ahead, Juan. What's going on? Uncle G, how are you doing, boss? Good, brother. Good. I'm doing great. Hey, boss. I was just calling. Uh, I went to one of your seminars before. Uh, you did it with uh, 
Damon in the OC. And uh, my question was, brother, was um, I just got laid off and I just wanted your advice. Like, what do you think I should do? Uh, say that again. Hello? Say that uh, again. So I just got laid off of my job. You lost your, you lost your to, job. Yeah, I just got laid off. So I just wanted to see what your opinion is on what I should do. Should I go back like right away looking for jobs or should I, what do you think I should do? Dude, you need to go get a job, bro. Yes, sir. Okay, you guys that lost your job. I'm talking to 38 million people right now. You should have never left your job. You shouldn't have walked away from your job. You should not have left your job. You should have said, "Don't okay, don't pay me, but I'm not leaving. You lost two things. Okay, you didn't lose one thing. You lost two things. You lost the pay yeah. and the job. So people, people don't understand a job. The first, the first part of a job is a job is a title. I have a job. I work at Grant Cardone's place. Number one, that's the first thing you got. That is very valuable, by the way. If you're working at a great company, I work at Google. Dude, I work at Google. That's a good thing to have. I work at J.P. Morgan. That's, that's a, I'm 22 years old, and I work at J.P. Morgan. What am I going to tell everybody? Hey, man, I work at J.P. Morgan. That's what you're going to tell people. You're not going to tell them what they pay you. Second thing is you're yeah, going to say, hey, I work at J.P. Morgan, and I make 200 grand a year there. That's the second part. But what happened when people got laid off, they're like, okay, they threw in the towel on both things. You shouldn't have. You should have said, you're getting rid of me because of the money, right? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Don't leave. Who? What job did you lose? Uh, it was like um, like for a manufacturer. They're manufacturing parts and stuff for Boeing and other things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Are they still in business? Yeah, they're still in business. Good, dude. I'd call the guy back today and say, "Hey, bro, I'm coming back. Don't pay me." All right. Deliver value, basically. Say again. You said deliver value. And then hopefully they'll start paying me. Soon. Well, I mean, I don't know if you deliver value. I don't even know if you do that. I would just go back and say, bro, don't pay me. Don't pay me. Don't worry about it. I don't need the money. I need the job. And see if you can get but that job money, back, okay? Too, no, no. Right now you need the job first. Okay? Right now you don't yeah, have a job and you don't have money. See, you guys get confused, man. You don't need, like, like let's say you're going to go work for yourself right now. You're going to start a business. Yeah. It's going to be called the, uh, the One XYZ Wuhan Recovery uh, uh, Inc., Okay? Okay, you, you have a job now. Now you need to go get money. That's the order. First the job, then the money. And you're going to be working for nothing. So, All right. Like, I have like, one more question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, player. So uh, uh, what's it called? I'm just like, it's like I'm very see, 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 Dante, hang on a second. Dante just said, so work for free? No, thanks. You're working for free now, folks. You're not working for free. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you're not working and, and you're not getting paid. Like, like, this is backwards what you're doing. Every company I've started, I started at free. I started at zero. The first company I started, and by the way, a lot of you out there thinking about going to work for yourself, okay? And somebody said, what if he has kids? He needs to go get him a job right now because his job ain't to stay at home with the kids. Get back and play. Get back and play. Um, my first job, the first job that I had, first business that I started, I went from making hundred grand a year to less than $30,000 a year. For three years in a row, I made less in three years than I made the year that I worked for somebody else. So if you guys want to make more money, maybe you don't go work for yourself because most people that work for themselves actually make less money. Last year, the average entrepreneur made $20,000 less, almost $22,000 less per year the entrepreneur from home, than if they would have worked for somebody else at an office. So Juan, you need, you, need, you, need, you need to figure out either where to go. If they won't bring you back, bro, you got to find some place where you can work in an environment where somebody, where the guy that you work for, maybe he had to cut you back for a month or two, but maybe he walks into your office tomorrow and says, hey, everybody's back to full pay Everybody's back to bonuses. Everybody's back to where we were because you stayed in the environment. How many people left here that shouldn't have left here? A, a lot. A lot. And now, now they're going through a, a, an even tougher time because they don't, have, they don't have a team around them to, to lift them up. I mean, I walked back into my office yesterday and put everybody back to where they were. So guess what? Guess who didn't get that pay raise? Anybody that gave up on us in the last 60 days. You don't want to give up on the vehicle you're in. So don't leave the vehicle. Just because you can't feed me, don't, don't throw me out of the car, too. You got Mikey. Okay. Mikey, what's going on? And I want to talk about Joe Rogan's $100 million deal. Uncle G, what's going on, 
brother. What's happening, what's player? Hey, hey, what do you think? What do you think about what I'm telling Juan about? Um, um, go back there and, and work for nothing. Listen, man. Whatever can get people back to work. Anything you say, I 100% agree with. Because right now, what's happening is not helping anybody. People think they're safe at home. It's better to stay home, get the get their little check. It's not going to help nobody. It's going to run out eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when it's time to go to work, nobody's going to want to go back. It's not good. Dude, ain't nobody going to know how to work. And you're going to come back to work in January. People are going to be like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to walk into an office. I don't know how to say hello. I don't know how to get dressed in the morning. Exactly. Exactly. I just want to say I can't wait to see you guys in August for that business boot camp. I can't wait, bro. There's another guy who wants to come back. He wants to come. He wants to. He's going to get on a plane. Where, where are you flying in from? New York. He's going to fly from New York down to Miami. He's going to go stay at the hotel, and we're going to do a deal and grow a business. Everybody's going back to planes, folks. You're going to go back to planes, cabs, Hertz cars, hotels, Hiltons. You're going to go back to making out. God damn, man. Huh? Right. I just want to say thank you again for being vocal about this, man. People need to hear this. I don't know. Let's go, man. Let's go back to licking faces. That's right. <laughs> okay. I had a dog. I had a little cat. I got cats in my house right now. They stink. I'm like, God dang. I w-, you know? Okay, Joe Rogan. Let's talk about Joe Rogan. $100 million deal with Spotify. Woo, Joe boy. Got just super mad admiration for you doing 11 years of interviews. Uh, for all you got podcasters out there like, oh, God damn, I'm going to get a deal. Uh, no, you ain't. Because <laughs> you're not going to do what Joe did. This guy has been doing podcasts for 11 years before anybody knew what a podcast is. Now everybody jumping on a pod, pa, podcast. We, I'm going to get me one too. I'm going to just interview people. I'm going to get me one. Let me tell you what Joe did to do this. First of all, Joe, Joe Rogan did Fear Factor, did comedy clubs, has been doing the UFC and podcasts all at the same time. So just want to clarify, all you guys out there, all you guys and gals, like I'm going to be a podcaster I'm going to be the next Joe Rogan. You got to understand that Joe Rogan has had income from other sources while he did his podcast. Okay. Rogan makes $75,000 or uh, uh, he, he was making $75,000 for every podcast. He was being paid 75 grand. You're doing yours for nothing. Okay. Some reports say he was making 50 to 75,000 and doing five podcasts a week. What, what is that? 250? 250 a week. Now, his new deal is $100 million. He takes all the content from YouTube, shuts that down. Okay, he goes to Spotify. It's exclusive. But he was getting 200 million views. So if you take 200 million views per podcast, is that right or per month? I think, I think 200, million, 200 million downloads. Yeah, yeah, 200 million downloads. So he's going to get 2.4 billion downloads in a year. 2.4. Let me just divide the 100 million. He's not going to get the money all at one time. By, divided by 2.4 billion downloads. This is how Spotify is doing the math. So they're paying basically four cents a view for the first year. So they're, Spotify is sitting there saying, we're paying him four cents a view. If he gets 200 million downloads a month, we're paying four cents a view for the first year. And the contract's paid for. I guarantee they can make sense of that. So for all of you out there thinking, man, Joe Rogan killed it. Okay, but what did he do? Also, the UFC was paying him, I think, 50000 a night to report. Okay, he was doing comedy clubs, working his routine out. Okay, working it out. You guys got to pay the price, man. You can't just show up and think you're going to get, I'm going to get a big, big paycheck. There's never been a single podcasting company that sells ads, makes shows, that has already had a popular podcast player and offers the tools to make new series. Spotify is doing this. They're going to go grab that space. What opportunities does it create? One with what? YouTube maybe? You think YouTube's going to figure out, hey, Google's going to be like, hey. What do you mean? Yeah. You think YouTube, uh, YouTube would have a deal for me? I think so. They should. Why not? What do y'all think? Can I get a deal? I'd do a deal for, for I don't know, maybe $25 million. Okay. Um, 
Other subscription models have to figure out, by the way, what Spotify is doing, because most of the, like Audible, Audible would be a perfect player to model this. Because here's the problem at Audible. You go get a free Michelle Obama book. It takes 18 hours to get through it. I think it's an 18 hour read. You got it for free and then you never go back to Audible. Okay, Audible should be doing something where I'm dropping new content every day and you got to go back into Audible in order to get it. That way you want to buy it and stay on the subscription platform. Netflix. Netflix is another good example. Netflix is getting destroyed right now. Their viewership's up, but their revenue didn't increase with the opportunity that they had because I pay one time and I can watch whatever I want. Okay, Johnny, how we doing? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Trump reopening mask what you gonna do you guys are sitting around watching from your house figuring out do i buy a new house do i stay here do i lease do it what's gonna happen now we're gonna reopen america we're gonna get started again we're gonna go to restaurants we're gonna go do business we're gonna go to the mall how are you gonna do that if you're out of work okay my recommendation is this number one go get you a job find out who's hiring 32 million businesses in america if 8 million of them fail, 24 million businesses are hiring and will be hiring and are going to look to get bigger and better. Everything's going to change now. Okay. The world has changed. You got to change with it. You got to grow through it. Fix your attitude right now. Grow your business. Grow your mindset. Invest in yourself. Be willing to let go of the money you have to get the future you deserve. Let's go reboot America. Let's talk to our callers. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing, my friend? Hi, Grant. Hey, How I you have doing? a question for you. Um, so I saw like one of your uh, other Cardone Zone videos, and you were talking to this 22-year-old saying he should not be with his girlfriend. And like, I, I took it literal. I just wanted to know if I... Uh, did the right decision. So I'm 16, and uh, I also broke up with my girlfriend. You broke up with her, or and she broke said, up with you? Yeah. No, I broke up with her. No, no, no. Tell me the truth, dude. She left you, didn't no. she? No, I broke up with her. You broke up with her. You proud of that? No, dude, dude that was savage. Uh huh. How old was that, she? That was crazy. How old was she? Twelve. Uh, same age. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Oh, and I was just wondering, like you said, to bang the money out, but like, uh, should I just be focused on school? And yeah, then, dude, look, like, look, look. First of all, you guys are you guys are fifteen, sixteen years old. You guys need to figure out how to get to get out of get out of high school by the time you're fifteen. What? Yeah, you don't need to go do the whole twelve years. Like, like it's stupid. What? Somebody made that up. So let's do twelve years. Why? Why not eight years? I told my daughter. I told Sabrina. I said, Sabrina. You could be out of high school by the time you're 12. You just need to focus, hammer down, and get it done. You don't need to wait until you're 18 to be out of high school. Just rush this stuff. Get it done, okay? It's the same BS. So you adding time to how you, what you learn in school is not going to make you more valuable going forward. Get out of high school sooner, and then do not go to college. Okay, you could be 16, fully in the workforce, learning stuff. By the time you're 20, dude, you could be a genius at work. At work. Any type of work? Yeah, at any type of work, okay? Like, nobody's going for genius at work. Like, I know how to work. I'm a genius at work. I can work. So become a genius at work. You don't need to become a genius at blah. You need to become a genius at working. Work. Get back to work. People should be getting out of school sooner. If you're good on a farm, be a freaking genius on the farm. You know, if you're good at e-commerce, become a genius. If you're great at marketing, become a genius and, and do stuff that nobody else can do. So adding time to your schedule. First of all, I'm glad that girl dumped you. And uh, you don't need to worry about girls right now. You need to worry about becoming valuable as a 16-year-old. Alexander the Great was already taken over Persia at 16 years old. He would laugh yeah. at us today. People going to yeah, college till they're 32. Okay. We good, Johnny? We're good. My name's Grant Cardone. This is the Cardone Zone. Here we talk about your business, your money, your finances. Every week I'll come to you. Sirius XM radio, business radio, 
Channel 132, uh, if you got questions, comments, you can always hit me, rock at grantcardone.com, rock at grantcardone.com. Big real estate webinar coming up this weekend. Love to have you as part of that. Uh, grantcardone.com forward slash R-E-I. It's free. Cardoneuniversity.com, cardoneu.com, cardoneuniversity.com. Free to all of the subscribers here. And if I can do anything to help you on any social medium, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube, it's Grant Cardone. Find me there. I'll help you get to the other side. Thanks for listening. Have you ever wanted to invest in real estate but didn't know where to start, how to fund the deals, how to find the deals, how to negotiate them? My name's Grant Cardone. I've been buying real estate for 30 years and have accumulated 7,700 units. have done over $2 billion worth of real estate transactions. I'm going to be doing a webinar that I want you to attend. When you sign up for this webinar, I'm going to give you my home study course, The Fundamentals of Multifamily, Four Ways to Invest in Multifamily, The Mechanics of the Deal, Finding the Deal, Buying the Deal, Negotiating the Deal, How to Get the Funding for the Deal, How to Manage the Deal, and How to Get 4X to 10X Returns on Your Investment. I'll break it down and make it so simple for you and I guarantee you'll get your first deal in 2020 and it's gonna be the steal of your lifetime. And when you sign up, I'll send you my home study course and you can actually use this so that when we're in the webinar, we can go over it together, okay? Hey, I look forward to seeing you.